Hi, hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss a few questions on apex triggers. So first of all, as we explained in a separate video about apex triggers, apex triggers, apex trigger is an apex code which can be invoked automatically based on the events occurring in an object where you written the trigger okay and based on the event you can automate some business process okay and based on the event you can do logic also other than trigger what are the things we have for example we have workflow which will be useful for for doing field update task creations email alerts when there is a record creation or update but you can't invoke any apex class and coming to process builder in process builder also you have create update events that means on an object you can identify create or update events then you can have creating child records creating different things that means you have more features compared to workflow rules in the process builders and you can invoke apex class also by using invocable annotation that means whenever you want to invoke a method from the process builder from the apex class then you have to make that method an invocable method but process builder also have <coughs> create update events now let's come to the apex triggers in apex trigger you have different kind of events not only create and update that means you can identify and do the business logic for different kind of uh, events occurring in an object that means why we discuss workflow process builder trigger because whenever the functionality or the business functionality what you want to achieve is not possible through workflow rule and process builder then only you have to come back to apex triggers okay so let's go to things so these are all the questions we have okay what first let's talk about the events supported by trigger okay what kind of events supported by triggers before inset after inset before update after update before delete after delete after and delete okay for and delete you don't have before and delete these are all the events supported by trigger and what kind of triggers we have before trigger after triggers okay and what are the context variables we have in triggers second question can we say few context variables first thing is what is context what is trigger context here that means for example as best practice you always need to maintain single trigger on an object but you have different logics for after insert event, for before insert event, for after delete or before delete event, after update, before update event. Then, how can you differentiate your business logic for each event? You can differentiate this kind of business logic whenever you have a different kind of business logic for each event, then you have to use trigger context variables based on the trigger context variables it can deviate or it can differentiate the context of your, your, it can identify the context of uh, your event okay for example if you want to run a business logic for before inset what you have to do you have to put on a condition trigger dot is inset and trigger dot is before here trigger dot is inset and trigger dot is before is trigger context variables so here what it is telling it is it block or this block should execute for before insert how it recognize because of this context variables trigger that is insert and trigger that is before like that we have different kind of trigger context variables we have trigger dot is insert trigger dot is update okay and trigger dot is update trigger dot is delayed trigger dot 
is after. Along with that, okay, we have other context variables also. This is for not for deviating the business logic. Instead, it is for holding the values or a list of uh, or a list of records, okay, based in the events occurring in an object. Those are all trigger dot new, trigger dot old. Trigger dot new will be holding a collection of records, newly inserted or newly updated records. Okay, and coming to trigger dot old. Trigger dot old will hold the old version of the record. Okay. At the same time, what is trigger dot new map? Trigger dot old map. Trigger dot new map also hold the collection of records, newly inserted or updated records in the form of map. Okay. For example, if you have, if you write, if you write a trigger on account, the trigger dot new map will be in the form of map of id comma account. Okay, and trigger dot old map also will hold the old version of records in old map. So again, we have different context variables. What is the purpose of different context variables? To differentiate the different logic for uh, each event. Okay, in the single trigger, according to best practice, you have to write a single trigger on an object. Next, let's go to this one. Okay, basically, can we do update of object where we return a trigger in after insert? Okay, normally you can't. Okay, because for example, I have a trigger on account. Okay, whenever an account is inserted, then I want to update account type as other value. Then my requirement is again I'm saying. I have an account and account I want to update account type as an other whenever account is inserted. That means I have to write a trigger on a, uh, account. For example, I return it. You can achieve this in process builder also. For example, I am taking this on account. I return a trigger and I am performing this action. So for a type for assigning the variable or assigning the value to the type, you can achieve this in before insert also. Sometimes in different scenarios, you may need to do a some complex logic, but after insert also for holding all the IDs and I mean after inserting only you can have a account ID. So for holding this, for uh, having uh, some complex logics in between, you have to write and you have to update the record in after insert logic. Then, if you do account ACT OBJ dot type equal to other, then it gives an error that is account is read only. Okay, then what you have to do? You have to, for example, if you write a trigger like this, uh, trigger, trigger name and account after insert then per account account ACT would be changed new then ACT would be the dot type equal this is the request so the same thing if I use before insert okay it will work as is so it will assign the it will update the type as other whenever account is inserted but I may have a complex scenario I have to do the same operation with a different kind of comparisons but I want to update the same thing after insert only because I need the ID and everything from the account after inserting, after committing everything into the database. Then I'm changing it. So after doing a lot of business logic, if I add like this, then it is going to give error that account is read only or record is read only. You can't update like that. Then how can you do it? First thing is after insert, whenever you want to update the record of the account or object where you written the trigger, in after insert, first one way is you have to retrieve the record one. 
once again in the trigger and you have to update. Instead of retrieving the record, that means you have to perform the SOQ query. Instead of performing SOQ query, you can write in other way also. So instead of that, you instantiate value. So for example, let's take uh, account. It's a simple thing. So once you have after insert, that means account is already uh, entered into the database and you have to retrieve the account record and you have to update. Okay. So because of that, if you give just like this, then it will give account is read only. So and now what you have to do? So you can retrieve the records based on the account ID and you can update. Instead of that, you can do this way also. So create a new instance. For example, when okay, and here it just specify id equals actopj dot id. That means you are just creating a new instance but with the same id and type equals other. Okay, then create. add of a city of each other then you can update it after your yeah. this is how you can do so with this what is going to happen indirectly it is getting the, or it is taking the inserted record and instantiating new instance and you are updating the values with the help of list okay this is how you have to work with object update or record update in the after insert where is it in the trigger <clears throat> now how can you avoid the recursive trigger through flag variables you can avoid okay and what is the what is the recursive here okay so, for example, I have a requirement that whenever an account is updated, I want to update associated contacts. And whenever contact is updated, I want to update associated account. So, if I have such kind of requirement, which is going to uh, update a contact and contact whenever contact is updated, again account updated, then it is going to be a recursive. That means end, I mean endless loop. When account is updated, then it up updates the contact. When contact is updated with something, then it updates the account. Then what you have to do, you need one way first. When account is updated, then you want to update contact based on some criteria. Then you have to use a flag variables to stop this, to come back to the trigger. Still, it comes to account trigger as it is going to update account but you can stop the execution of business logic in the account trigger that is the use of recursive variables that is the way use of flag variables okay static variables you can use and at same way when contact is inserted when contact is updated you have to uh, avoid through flag variables from account to contact contact to account you always need to use flag variables okay and one more thing you have to see you have to uh, consider this you always need to use this flag variables before the dml statement that means for example now whenever account is updated your account you are going to update contacts that means in the account trigger you are updating contact with the update statement then what is going to happen this update statement is going to trigger on contact immediately so what you have to do you have to make this make a static variable true or false based on your conditions before the update statement of contact then this flag variables whatever you are using here before the update statement you have to use the same thing 
in the business logic of trigger on contact then you can stop execution of logic you can't stop firing the trigger on the contact but you can stop the execution of business logic in the trigger this is how you can do okay so now we know what kind of event supported by triggers and what are the context variables and purpose and how can we do a update of an object or record um, in the after insert event okay on object where we return the trigger and how can we avoid recursive trigger okay and what is the purpose of by using uh, flag variables we can do and where we have to use always flag variable you have to make true or false before the dml statement okay in that way only you can avoid the recursive okay all the best